Welcome to the London Valves meeting in 2021. I'm Andreas Rick. I'm a cardiologist at Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm, Sweden. We will discuss the early NEO2 registry on the accurate uh, NEO2 uh, TAVI prosthesis. With me, I have Dr. Kim from Bad Nauheim in Germany. Thank you very much, Andreas, for the introduction as the initiator of the early NEO2 registry. Please, can you tell us why this registry has been initiated and was, what was the objective of this registry? Yes, so the Accurate NEO2 is a newer generation TAVI valve that came out in September last year. And since the earlier generation had somewhat disappointing results on PVL in two trials, we were quite anxious to know uh, how much better this device potentially was uh, with regard to PVL and also with other endpoints that were recorded in the other studies. Could you please highlight what has changed from the Accurate Neo 1 to Accurate Neo 2? What is the biggest improvement in your yes. opinion? So the uh, obvious change is that the skirt, uh, which prevents the paravalve leak, is higher and has a larger area, so potentially more efficacious against paravalve leak. There is also a marker now on this generation on the delivery system, a dot that shows exactly where to place this in, in the annulus to get more precision with the placement. Uh, please, Dr. Kim, can you, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about the participating centers in this European registry? Yeah, as you said, it's a, a European-based study. Several sites have contributed to this registry from um, different countries. Uh, there was a well-balanced distribution of um, this uh, study. So in these 554 patients, which kind of patients were enrolled in the registry? Yeah, I think it's an elderly uh, patient population with intermediate risk um, profile. Most patients were female in two thirds of cases. And um, we included also bicuspid aortic valves and uh, valve and valve procedures in a small percentage. Yes, as I recall it, there were not any major exclusion criteria. So would you say this is a more of a real world uh, population than maybe in some other trials that have been presented? Yes, exactly. It was an all comers um, registry, consecutive uh, inclusion of all patients that were treated. So it's the early real world um, experience um, in Europe and uh, to the best of my knowledge is the largest um, data set that we have. What would you say uh, about the procedures uh, in general? Were they safe? Were there uh, many complications with uh, this Tavi device? Yeah, procedure-wise, um, so most procedures were done uh, via femoral axis in anergo sedation. Predilatation was common, postdilatation occurred in um, 36 percentage. And if you look at the um, safety profile, we, we had a very favorable outcome. For instance, no instance of unruption, no coronary obstruction, very low complication rates in terms of uh, vascular complications or bleeding. Uh, what was very astonishing is the extremely low rate um, um, of acute kidney injury grade 3, which was only 0.2%. If we look at the extremely low rate of acute kidney injury, um, in comparison to scope 1, for instance, which was um, rather high, what, what, what is your insight on that? Could, do you have any explanation for, for this uh, low rate of kidney injury? Yes, what we see now is that the average contrast use per procedure is quite low with these procedures. So if you exclude the, the orthogram, it's enough with around 15 milliliters of contrast to place this device. And that's probably why it translates to such a low number of acute kidney injuries and potentially also the marker on the delivery system that we have now makes it easier to see. So you need less contrast to place it in the right place. Yeah, I agree, even though we have no um, um, uh, explanation for this, uh, but I, I assume that uh, it's also an um, indi indicator of um, more experienced centers participating in this uh, registry. I, I totally agree. Yes, yeah, I agree. I agree. So Andreas, we, we have been talking about the safety and um, procedure details, but uh, of course what we really want to know are the primary outcomes. So can you tell us about um, the, the primary results of this uh, registry? Yes, uh, 
so of course since the major difference was the skirt on the device everybody was uh, waiting anxiously for the results to come back from the core lab on the echoes for paravalve leak and then rate of paravalve leak was quite low at 2.7 percent with with a moderate leak no patients with a large leak uh, and then uh, over half of the patients had a trace or mild leak. So that was uh, significantly better than the older generation device for sure. Then on the echo also, the mean gradient was low. We know that from the previous studies too, this is a superannular valve with a large opening area that's well known. What's interesting is that the pacemaker rate was also lower than in the previous studies with the older generation device, only 6% in this registry. Mortality was low at 1% and stroke was at 2%, including minor strokes as well in that uh, number. Okay, yeah, that's um, fantastic results. If we go a little bit more into detail regarding um, paravival leak, I think the explanation for reduction of um, PVL is, of course, the, the skirt. Uh, but what about the lower pacemaker rate? With 6%, we are even lower than previous data, which are around 10%. What is your opinion on that? We can't say uh, for sure what the reason was, but uh, for one, I would say that experience centers, even with the previous generation device, would have a pacemaker rate of maybe 5 to 6% even previously. We had that also with the earlier generation, and I'm sure you had it in many centers in Germany too. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, actually, I've very recently heard of one center, they tried to um, achieve a very high implant position, which I would not um, generally recommend, but um, they have very low pacemaker rates, which are below 1%. So yes. I think we have to find a good trade off between a safe deployment without the risk of popping out and a uh, low pacemaker rate and the implantation def, uh, definitely plays a role. There's of course one other thing that uh, this, since the skirt is better, uh, you need to post a little less frequently than before. And uh, of course, more post dilatations could have uh, caused some of the AV blocks in earlier trials with the device. Yeah, definitely. Andreas, we mentioned initially that the previous device generation, the Accurate Neo 1, did not meet non-inferiority compared to other devices. What do you think with the Accurate Neo 2 results? Do you think there would have been a difference in terms of scope trials? I think so. If you add up the numbers that we achieved in this registry and would put them uh, together with the numbers uh, in the uh, to uh, randomized trials that we had composite endpoints, uh, you would have a much more favorable number using the numbers from this registry, where both pacemakers, uh, PVL, uh, the kidney injury, etc., were all better than what was recorded before. Despite the fact that I think that these patients were in this registry were slightly less selected and more bit more difficult patients anatomically than uh, the ones that were included in the randomized trials. So Dr. Kim, what do you think is the take home message of this uh, early NEO2 registry of the accurate NEO2 device? Yeah, thank you, Andreas. I think in conclusion, we can say that um, we have real world data. It's the early experience in Europe with consecutive patients. It's the largest data set so far using the um, um, accurate NEO2. We have core lab adjudicated data showing a re really low rate of moderate PVL and very low pacemaker rates uh, that were both lower than in previous studies. And I think all in all, it is really uh, safe to say that the Accurate Neo 2 seems to perform at a similar level as other later generation TAVI prosthesis. Thank you very much for this exciting discussion that we have. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, discussion as well. And um, I hope that you will further enjoy uh, London Wells 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.